Hayden, for those of us who've grown up in the bright lights of Toronto, provide me with a perspective of what it was like to grow up in southwestern or southeastern Saskatchewan in the little town of Carlisle. Uh, it was, uh, it's a pretty quiet town. I mean, there's not much going on there. There's a, there's a skating rink, a ballpark, but uh, just a, a lake to go to in the summertime. So it's a pretty relaxing little town, but uh, really just the biggest thing is relaxing. If you want to go to a movie, you have to drive an hour away, so you're kind of you're kind of stuck out there a bit and you got to go two hours to the near, next biggest city Regina so it's, it's very relaxing for sure. I'm not sure if you enter your town it's hometown of Brendan Morrill but maybe you've got a chance to, to change all that. Uh, did you ever get a chance to meet him, know him and then has he been a, a role model for you in your career? Uh, yeah for sure he's a big role model. He was actually my uh, babysitter growing up so uh, yeah I got to know him quite well and uh, yeah he's uh, given me some advice over the past couple of years just to keep playing my game, don't uh, let the critics, uh, don't listen to the critics too much, so for sure, yeah, he's been a very big role model. Who introduced you to the game of hockey? Uh, my dad. I started uh, playing, playing hockey when I could walk. I was on, being from a small town in Carlisle, you could play as soon as you could skate, so they just needed as much kids as they could, as much kids as they could get, so I was, uh, I was one of those kids that started very, very young at the age of three, so been playing the game ever since. A lot of the guys have talked about minor coaches along the way who have helped make them better. Why was Del Pedrick so important to you in your development? Uh, he just, uh, he made me realize my true potential. I think he pushed me in the areas I need to be pushed and he uh, held me accountable. He treated me like a pro when I was at a very young age, which helped me, helped me a lot to develop and be the player I am today. You get a chance to play for Brent Sutter and when I think of Brent, I think of accountability. What's it been like with him as your boss? That's uh, the biggest thing right there is accountable and uh, he holds me accountable every day. He doesn't let, me, uh, doesn't let any of my habits slip and I'm very grateful for that. He treats me like a pro and he treats everyone on the team like a pro and he cares about each and everyone's uh, development and he wants everyone to get to the next level. So being in Red Deer is a great spot for me. I'm very, uh, very thankful for the opportunity I've gotten there and I owe a lot of that to Brent. In your efforts to make our national junior team, uh, that has to help playing for a guy like that and the, and the role he might have in maybe getting you to that level as you work hard to get there. Uh, yeah, for sure. I think he came back from uh, the World Juniors this year with a lot of valuable advice for me, just the, the ways to make the team in the future. And, but the biggest thing is just to go and work hard for Hockey Canada. I think if you go there, work hard and do take your role, they'll, uh, they'll try their best to get you on the team. I ask this of all puck moving defensemen, were you ever a forward at what time and if so when, when did you get the move to the blue line? Uh, no, I was never a forward. I kinda, my dad always wanted me to try me a forward but I kind of always fought him on, uh, just didn't really want to go up there. I wanted, the, I wanted to have the puck on my stick and being a forward you don't have that as much as a D. You played on Canada's sixth consecutive uh, Ivan Holinka championship last August. What was the key to being so successful in such a short time considering the little time that that team had to being put together? I think, yeah, for sure, it's just getting together and bonding quickly, you know. Uh, some teams are practicing for a month before that tournament. In Canada, we don't have that luxury, so it's, we're put together, but we're, at that point, it's the most talented team Canada can put together, and we're playing with a lot of skilled players, so that makes it a lot easier. Aaron Eckblad was on that team, but your defense partner was also a guy that's going to go drafted very high, Roland McCone of the Kingston Hockey Club. Tell me about the, the chemistry between you guys that you've had at the international level. Yeah, for sure. We have a really good chemistry. We played together both uh, under 18s this, uh, this year, and uh, we were very comfortable with each other. I think we were roommates at the, the one in the spring as well. So, uh, yeah, we're very comfortable, and we know what uh, we kind of know each other's tendencies for how uh, short of a time it's been to get to know each other on the ice. Not a hockey related story, but a human life story. Were you a part of, of the floods of Southern Alberta? Were you around Red Deer in the spring of 2013? Um, uh, it was more in Calgary. Red Deer didn't flood as bad, but uh, me and my dad actually we went down to uh, downtown Calgary and we helped, uh, we helped out a family that uh, needed some help. So we, I kind of didn't experience it firsthand, but uh, I helped out that family and it was, very, uh, it was very sad to see what they had to go through. You're an Edmonton Oilers fan. Why and how did that all begin? Uh, my dad, uh, I was kind of born into one. My dad's been an Oilers fan for a long time and uh, growing up uh, I lived in actually just outside of Edmonton in Leduc so uh, just being an Oilers fan is always the most, uh, most uh, easy thing for me and it's, I'm still an Oilers fan and it's, I hope they turn around soon. The ambience leading up to the draft in Philadelphia and how hard you've worked, uh, you, you sit back maybe even lying in your bed at night just picturing how this is all going to unfold. What is, what is your thought process heading to Philadelphia in a few weeks time? 
Yeah, for sure. I've let my mind wander a couple times before you go to bed, and it uh, gets you excited. I think this is your childhood dream, and it's almost come true. Going, uh, getting up on stage and shaking Gary Bettman's hand is going to be a, a surreal thing, and uh, it just, it's just going to be fun to see like where you end up. And but you can't really let your mind wander too much because so many other things could happen before then. Is this a unique situation this week uh, with colleagues that you've played with at the international level, but adversaries that you've played against? Uh, what's it been like hanging out with this group of talented young men? Yeah, it's been a really fun experience. I think you get to meet uh, you get to meet more people when you come to these events. I, I know quite a few just from the Prospects game and Hockey Canada and that type of stuff. So we still get to meet more guys, and most guys are really good guys at this uh, these types of events, and it makes it really more of a better experience. What's your perspective of the city of Toronto and perhaps even the possibility that the Maple Leafs could call your name come Friday night in Philadelphia? Uh, it'd be a very, very good experience. I think Toronto, you're, you're a pressure-filled city, and uh, it's a very big town, so uh, you're going to have the media on you at all times. But uh, at the end of the day, you like you like playing hockey in a pressure situation like this. And uh, Toronto's a very good city. You guys got a very good fan base, so it should be really exciting.